Hi everybody, this is Couch Potato Gaming, and today we're going to get into the tier list for the new War Bond, which is called Democratic Detonation. But before we do that, I just wanted to briefly go over accessing the War Bond and maybe some tips and tricks for getting access to it sooner if you don't want to shell out the $10 to buy the pass. Uh, like me, uh, I initially bought the deluxe edition of the game, which came with the Steeled Veterans War Bond, but after that I decided I would probably just grind to get the super credits in-game for the remaining War Bonds. And so for everyone who already has the new War Bond, feel free to skip ahead a few minutes to the actual tier list and uh, showcasing the weapons. But for you guys that are behind in super credits and don't have the War Bond, uh, just real quick, the best way that I found to farm super credits was to find a difficulty 1 or 2 mission. For me, I would just do the illegal broadcast missions if you can find them and just go around the map looking for the locations where you can blow up the bunkers and the also the shining yellow beams in the sky uh, around the map to look for super credits. And you may have to do this a couple times to find a game where you get, uh, I, I think 40 is the most I was able to get solo, but I know that you if you do this with a teammate, uh, you guys have the potential to get a lot more since you can access the hangars that take two players to open where you push the buttons. But so once you find a game that you like and you get, you know, at least 40 or so super credits and it's pretty easy to traverse the map and, and access those super credits. Once you get your super credits in that game, just quit out of the game. Alt F4 if you're a PC for me, I opened up the game menu on PS5 and exited out of the game that way. And the game will actually save your super credits that you've accrued in that game, as well as the mission that you were on. And so when you boot back up the game and go to the mission select screen, you should still be on the same exact mission. And so, you know, you know where everything is on the map now. And so for me, once I got a game that I liked, I took a picture of the game map with all the points of interest on it, um, just so I can remember where the locations for the super credits are. But basically, you load up another game, and it'll be the same map, and once you've collected your samples for that run, you just quit out of the game again and rinse and repeat until you get to 1,000 super credits. And so they have a ton of great tutorials out there on how to fully maximize these runs. So I highly suggest you seek out those types of videos, and uh, I'll link one or two that I found really helpful in the description if I have a chance later on. But uh, for me, I went from probably just 15 super credits to 1,015 or so in about two to two and a half hours. So it's definitely a bit of a grind, but for people who want to get access to the War Bond for free, um, that seems to be the best way. Also, one final note, if you're going to be doing this solo, uh, be sure to set your matchmaking to friends only in the menu so that other people don't join your game. So one more brief point just on farming and uh, just farming in general in this game. Uh, I know there's people out there that really look down on that practice just because a lot of farming methods um, involve losing the game intentionally. I would just say for for this farming method, it's really not like that. It basically saves your progress, and so you're able to keep playing the same mission, but accumulate super credits, and so you're not losing the mission every time. All right, anyway, so after that long and lengthy detour, let's get to the tier list for the new War Bond and see some of the new weapons in action. Okay, so here's the tier list. I just used uh, tiermaker.com online, and so we have our categories. Um, in true Cold Stone fashion, our categories are Gotta Have It for S tier, Love It for A tier, Like It for B tier, Meh for C tier, and finally we have Garbo or Garbage for our garbage items or F tier. Okay, so here are all the items from the new War Bond. Uh, we're not including like the capes and the new player cards and things like that, but we're going to get into these in no particular order, except I will tell you that I'm saving for last the item that disappointed me the most, so stick around for that. So first up, let's just get this out of the way right off the bat. The R36 Eruptor Explosive Rifle is at the top of our Gotta Have It tier. 
I mean, we all knew this was coming, and I'm sure you guys have heard people ranting and raving about this weapon by now. How it's the new autocannon, how it can destroy bug holes and fabricators. I mean, if it had legs, it could probably walk on water. So I tested this weapon extensively against both automatons and bugs, and I can just tell you right now, it absolutely lives up to the hype. Here, as you can see, the Eruptor is explosive, and so it does have a small AoE. Uh, so at least with bugs, I found that if you aim for like medium-sized bugs and you've got a lot of smaller bugs around them, they oftentimes will die from the explosion, as you can see here. And as you can see here, the gun is still very much accurate at range. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people complaining about the cocking of the bolt in between shots and just how long that takes. But I actually found that this was a good thing because it essentially resets your sight picture each time and um, just kind of keeps you on target as opposed to, I feel like if I tried to fire this semi-auto, if that was possible um, to fire it faster, that I would just be a lot more inaccurate. But as you can see, it one shot scout striders, it'll take out rocket devastators in two shots, and it does especially well against small and medium sized bugs, including chargers, which I've reliably been able to two to three shot kill. And that doesn't even account for the utility of this weapon, just the fact that you have medium plus armor penetration, that you know, you have plenty of ammo, that you can take out bug holes and fabricators, and most importantly, that you can do all this without needing to take up a specific support weapon or even a backpack slot. Basically, the Eruptor gives you a ton of utility without being shoehorned into one specific category. And so for me, the only thing that really seemed to hold this weapon back is the lack of a steady fire rate. And so I've been pairing it with the Stalwart machine gun, and I've had a lot of success with that, but you know, I'm sure any machine gun support weapons would work, and even potentially like the laser cannon would be a good complement. Just something that can dish out a constant stream of damage for when you get swarmed. So there we have the Eruptor rifle at the top of our gotta have it tier. Let's see what's next. Okay, so let me just say this first. I had no idea that so many people hated the new Thermite Grenade. I mean, I played with it almost exclusively since the new Warbond came out against automatons and bugs, and I really enjoyed it. But before you click off this video and seek out the opinion of someone with actual taste and sensibility, hear me out on this. I don't really expect much from grenades. We all know the impact grenade is the best grenade in the game, and that's what I've been running since I had it unlocked from the very beginning. Yes, the stun grenades are cool, but I want something that can destroy things that I need to destroy. And now that I can't even stun Bile Titans anymore, I just can't really justify taking them on the vast majority of missions. So yeah, the impact grenade is superior in every way, and there's really no reason to take the Thermite over that, except for maybe one simple but ever so crucial thing. It's a thermite grenade, and, well... A really big fucking hole coming right up. It's fun, okay? It's a lot of fun. I love throwing it at chargers and bile titans and watching the 4th of July just emanating from their bodies before they explode and fall in a fiery heap. I love that a charger will continue to run after you even though there's a military-grade explosive eating through his body and giving him 4th degree burns. I love that if a charger manages to catch up to me while he's on fire, he can light me on fire too. Sure, I could tell you that it doesn't take three to four of those thermite grenades just to take down a charger, or that it usually takes me all six to take down a bile titan. I could even try to convince you that people who don't like it just aren't using it correctly and that it's only supposed to be used to strip armor so you can deal damage with your other weapons, but that would be missing the point. No, it's not the best, and it certainly doesn't hold a candle to the impact grenades in terms of raw damage and power, but like I said, I don't expect much from my grenades, and the thermite grenade has massive curve appeal. Also, I heard that damage over time has been bugged for players who aren't the host, so I'll just assume that you guys have been getting the bugged version and that's why everyone hates it. Okay, let's move on before I change my mind. Meet the BR-14 Agendicator, the hothead little brother of the M14. This is easily my most used gun from the new Warbond, and it's actually pretty effective. 
However, much like your real life sibling, it comes with its own issues that will inevitably become a burden on you and your family. The BR-14 has the unique status as the only marksman rifle capable of fully automatic fire. And once you try the full auto fire, you're never gonna go back to those other single fire marksman rifles. Also, like the Diligence Counter Sniper, the BR-14 has medium armor penetration, making it a great all-arounder and all-purpose weapon for bugs and automatons alike. But remember those issues I told you about? Well, there are a few. Let's start with the mag size, which is only 25 rounds, which seems like a lot for a marksman rifle, except when you're always firing in full auto, 25 rounds only gives you about mm, 8 seconds of breathing room before it's time to reload. And that's when we come to our next problem, which is the total ammo capacity. I don't know if this is just me noticing this, but whenever I would take this gun on automaton missions, I was constantly running out of ammo. Maybe I was just exercising less trigger discipline, shooting at targets that can, you know, shoot back, but I did find that I was able to conserve my ammo a whole lot better against bugs. In any case, the BR-14 is a solid weapon, and like your younger brother, it certainly has problems, but you make it work, because that's what people do. And so I'll continue to make things work with this weapon by using up my team's resupplies and scrounging the map for ammo boxes, because in the end, it's worth it. Next up, we have the GP31 grenade pistol, which really needs no introduction. This sidearm has received unconditional praise and adoration by fans for really one specific reason. It allows you to carry a mini grenade launcher in your back pocket. Since the dawn of war, scientists have sought to make weapons more and more lethal and smaller in size. And the GP31 is a testament to that aim. The GP31 is a one round grenade pistol with a reasonable reload time and boasts high explosive damage. It does well against basic automatons and striders and even better against bug hoids. But let's be real, that's not why the grenade pistol is in our gotta have it tier. It's there for one big reason, utility. The grenade pistol packs the same punch as an autocannon or impact grenade without requiring you to actually take those things, thus freeing up your stratagem slots for more mission-oriented things. And did I mention it can take out bug holes and the like? Now you guys can run those stun grenades you're all so fond of, free from worry. For me, the secondary slot is just a backup in case my primary and support run dry, so I don't really give much thought to the sidearm I carry on most missions. However, the explosive capability and utility provided by the GP31 has captured my attention, and it's enough for me to place it in the gotta have it tier alongside the Eruptor. Okay, so next let's talk about some of the armor sets that have been released with the new Warbond. First up is the Devastator set, which is a heavy armor set resembling a bomb defusal vest and a Russian-style helmet similar to the one showcased in the game PUBG. This set is great, and now that heavy and medium armor are working the way they're supposed to, it's great to be getting more of these heavy armor sets. Nothing more to say on that. Okay, so now we're moving on to the Demolition Specialist, and I placed the armor in Like It and the helmet in Meh. Honestly, I'm not crazy about the actual stats of any of the armors in this Warbond, especially since I was expecting at least one new armor passive and we didn't get any. The only reason why I rated the armor higher is because there are already like three helmets that look pretty similar to that one, and I do like the look of the armor a little bit better, I've been running it a lot lately just for fun, and also, when I first saw the Demolition Specialist armor, I laughed because it looked a lot like that guy from The Incredibles, so Arrowhead must be doing something right. So next up we have the Groundbreaker armor set, and I've got to be honest, I'm really getting tired of the yellow cadet armor. Um, maybe I'm in the minority on this, but... Cadet armor is like the most default armor you can get, and I just think it should exclusively be in the normal free war bond so that new players can get it as they're leveling up. 
I just don't see why we're still putting yellow armor sets in the paid war bond three war bonds in. And I feel like Arrowhead could have actually put something cool and innovative in its place. I'm not really happy with the fact that the armored passive is another one that we've seen a million times either. Isn't this supposed to be the demolition war bond? How about an armored passive that, I don't know, negates ragdoll effects from explosives and, uh, or maybe one that resists fire damage since fire has gotten a huge buff recently. I will put the Groundbreaker helmet in Like It, though, because at least they did something a little bit more creative with, like, the World War II-style gas mask kind of valve on the side of the helmet. But overall, I just wasn't particularly impressed by the armor sets in this war bond. And I guess I'm just hoping that the next war bond gives the community a little more. Or at least takes some risks. Now with that out of the way, we have two more items to talk about one of which is going to win my award for the most disappointing item of the war bond. Let's see which one it is. All right, so our penultimate spot goes to the new booster, the Expert Extraction Pilot. And at first, I was really hyped for this when they announced the new war bond. I, like many of you, often feel that the extraction ship takes way too long to arrive. Another part of me thought that this would be a great booster for farming and leveling up since it would shave more time off each run. Boy was I wrong. I must have tested this booster out five or six times noticing little to no difference before I consulted the all-knowing authorities over on Reddit and learned that the booster only cuts down on extraction time by a mere 15%. So essentially, if it normally takes two minutes to extract, with the booster, it'll only take about 1 minute and 40 seconds to extract. And I know what you're thinking, 20 seconds isn't that bad. But let's just compare this to some of the other boosters in the game. You have the Vitality Booster that helps you resist injury, the Stamina Booster that increases max stamina and improves stamina regen, and then you have the Hellpod Space Optimization Booster, which lets you spawn in with full health and ammo each time. Now the first two are pretty much non-negotiable in every run, and the third is almost always chosen just out of pure convenience. So that leaves only one more booster for the team to choose. Is Expert Extraction Pilot really good enough to be picked over the likes of UAV Recon Boost, Muscle Enhancement, or even the two Reinforcement Boosters? I mean, maybe if the booster cut the extraction time in half, then it would be more worth it, but... As it stands, it's still way too weak to justify its own existence. And so for these reasons, the Expert Extraction Pilot Booster sits right alongside the likes of the Groundbreaker Armor, right here in the Garbo tier. And so just like that, we've reached the last item on our tier list. And so that last one was at least mildly disappointing, but there's one item that was even more disappointing than that, and... That's, well, you guessed it, the crossbow. When I heard that a crossbow was coming to Helldivers 2, I was psyched. It was about time we got a weapon tailored to a more stealth, ambush-based style, and maybe the crossbow was going to fill that role. However, then I heard that the crossbow was going to be exclusively an explosive crossbow. I was still excited. I've used the explosive crossbow in the Call of Duty games and other games and had a ton of fun with it. This is going to be even better. And then I heard that there was going to be another explosive weapon, a rifle that fires explosive rounds. This seemed kind of odd to me since it seems like both of these things do essentially the same thing. But still, I held out hope that the crossbow would be different, even if only aesthetically. Unfortunately, I was right. The explosive crossbow is clearly distinct from the eruptor rifle, because where the eruptor is everything people love about explosive primaries, the crossbow represents everything people hate about explosive primaries. First of all, the crossbow deals way less damage to single target enemies than the eruptor, unless of course you accidentally hit yourself, whereby you'll be instantly killed, whereas the eruptor merely ragdolls you and deals a slight bit of damage. People complain that the Eruptor takes forever to cycle a new round. Well, luckily the crossbow is magazine-fed, but it retains a slow rate of fire anyways. 
Many people have pointed out that the reload time on the crossbow is very good, but when your mag size is only 6 shots, you're going to be spending a lot of time reloading regardless. Another area where the crossbow is clearly inferior is in its utility. At this point, it's pretty well known that the explosive crossbow, which fires explosive bolts, can't destroy bug holes, nor can it open in cargo crates. However, it can destroy fabricators for some reason. This makes no sense whatsoever. Next, we look to the explosive crossbow's accuracy. Obviously, it wouldn't be realistic to assume that a crossbow could be accurate at the same range as a rifle with minimal target drop, but even the crossbow's projectile speed at fairly close ranges requires arcing the weapon. Crossbows may not fire at the same speed as a rifle, but it still should be relatively quick. My bolts move as if they just ate an entire bag of pizza rolls by themselves. All joking aside, I enjoyed playing with the crossbow to the same extent that I enjoy playing with any crossbow from a video game. But if I wanted to clear trash and maybe stagger some enemies, I'm taking the Eruptor, or even the Punisher Plasma before I'm taking the crossbow. To say I was let down by this weapon is a huge understatement, but overall I would say that the War Bond is still worth the price, especially if you can unlock it for free. So with that being said, my quick two sentence summary, if I was to pick Three things to prioritize as you're moving through the war bond. I'd say definitely get the Adjudicator, the Eruptor, and the Grenade Pistol as soon as possible. And then from there, maybe either get the Thermite Grenade or one of the Armor Sets next. Just leave the new booster and the crossbow for last, since neither are really must-haves under the current meta. Anyway, so that's my tier list, which, by the way, is based completely on my own preferences and just what I thought was good or fun from the new war bond. Feel free to drop your own tier list in the comments below, or comment just to tell me how wrong I am about my placement of certain items. All feedback is appreciated. In any case, that's going to do it for us today. Again, I'm Couch Potato Gaming. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video, and for some of you, maybe even sticking around to the very end. I really appreciate you guys, and just this community in general, I think, is one of the best aspects of this game. And so just try, if you can, to look out for each other and help new players learn the game and be patient with them as much as you can. And of course, more than anything else, continue spreading managed democracy around the galaxy. Thank you.